running the affairs of the company and managing the affairs of the company running the business uh, on behalf of the owner so they play the role of an agent um, so the agency relationship uh, the agents on behalf of the owners run the business and take decisions for the owners so that they can maximize the profit of the shareholders and then we learned about what are not for profit organizations so um, there are three things which are taken into consideration value for money under that we have three e's economy efficiency and effectiveness and then system analysis with the help of systems how it can be taken up the next topic what we are going to start today is investment appraisal investment appraisal so the first the first decision is about raising finances financing decision the second decision is about investment so investment um, investment made into current assets investment made into fixed assets that is what has to be looked into now if investment has to be made um, in that case um, investment is made in the present period so as against that the uh, returns or cash flows or profits are expected to be generated from future period so these are basically forecasted anticipated cash flows taking into consideration those future cash flows anticipated future cash flows and the decision is taken whether or not to invest the amount into those assets or those projects so that is the decision investment appraisal considers the future anticipated cash flows considering them comparing them with what is the amount of investment made as on uh, the present date so comparing that a decision is taken about um, whether the investment should be made or not did you um, do fm in the uh, college in college did you do yes ma'am but that was not no no uh, i'm just uh, no i'm just asking you did you do did you work out questions not much ma'am okay okay no i just want to know from where have you worked out the questions so that uh, if you have already worked out questions from the exam kit that would be a repetition so i can uh, find out some other material and work it out if you have no not... ma'am we haven't done okay. the exam kit yet okay so then we will work out the questions from the exam kit only okay so investment appraisal talks about a comparison of the cash outflow or the investment made as on today with the future cash flows uh, it, from the future first one uh, the first technique which is used to find out what is uh, whether the investment is um, worthy investment or not whether it is a profitable one whether it would be proved to be profitable one or not is roc roc is also called as return on capital employed then we have other techniques also which are uh, payback net present value internal uh, rate of return so here um, when we group them we group the first two into one category the next two into another category the first two is um, we call them as traditional techniques the first two are called as the traditional techniques okay the uh, reason why they are called as traditional techniques is they are not uh, uh, they do not consider the time value of money so that is another important thing so because the last two consider the time value of money they are also called as discounted techniques 
So for the first, the first category of traditional techniques, we see that the first one is ROCE. It is simply to understand what is the amount of profit which is generated over a period of time, compare that uh, with the cash investment, and then find out um, whether it is um, worthwhile to be invested in the project or not is what is assessed. The next one is payback period. Payback period is what is the amount of uh, time it, requ it is required to get back the investment which is made in the uh, business. So that is the point here uh, under this. So these two techniques, I will uh, explain that in detail also. These two techniques do not consider what is the time value of money. The next two one, we see that net present value and internal rate of return, both of them consider the time value of money. What does it mean by time value of money? There is a principle in economics which is, uh, which is called as discounting um, a principle of economics, which says that as the time passes by, the value of money is discounted. It um, So we must have heard from uh, elders in the family uh, talking about that in our days, uh, we used to buy with one rupee, very elderly people that grandparents, great grandparents and all. Um, otherwise also we see that 100 rupees was, was worth so much. We, would, we were able to buy so many things. Salary was only 100 rupees, 200 rupees like that. We uh, hear from our grandparents, great grandparents about uh, what they were able to do with a small amount of money. But now that is not possible. 100 is not worth anything that anything can be purchased with 100 rupees or for that matter, to get those amount, uh, to get those quantities of products, we need to spend a whole lot of money, okay? So what does it indicate? It indicates that as the time passes by, the same amount loses its value and to compensate that, it has to be compensated with more quantity of money. So whatever 100 rupees was able to do some 20, 30 or 40, 50 years back, it is not the same. So 50 years back, what 100 rupees was worth, if that the same thing has to be taken up now, maybe it has to be multiplied with many more times, maybe 1,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 or something. So the same thing is not possible to be done with the same quantity of money. Now that that is the principle, that is the principle, discounting principle based on which we have the other techniques, net present value and internal rate of return. What are these techniques? It says that if the investment is made as on today, the cash flows which are uh, anticipated, they are anticipated in the future. So at the end of period one, at the end of period two, so on, till the end of the life of the project. So all the cash inflows are in the future. So from the future, these cash flows are earned. So if that is the case, these cash flows, whatever are anticipated, will not have the same value. Let's say that if, as on today, if there is 50,000 worth of investment made and cash flows are anticipated for the next 10 years as 10,000 at the end of each period. So first at the end of first year, 10,000. At the end of second year, 10,000. Third year, 10,000, so on. So when we add them up, 10, 10,000 are 1 lakh. So then we immediately understand that, yes, it is uh, worth so much because the investment is only 50,000, but the uh, returns are 100, uh, 1 lakh. Um, so that is... Uh, very worthwhile. So therefore, the investment decision is taken. But the principle, according to that principle, when we look into that, 10,000 is not worth 10,000. It, it will have a reduced value. The value will reduce. The, at, the second of, at the end of second year, even further. Third year, it goes on keep uh, reducing until the last period. So each of these 10,000s, what we are anticipating at the end of each period, will not be the same, but it will be at a reduced value. So after calculating all the reduced values, total them up and then compare it with what is the investment and then think about whether it is profitable or not. So that is what is uh, what did, uh, these discounted techniques talk about. So before the analysis is taken up, 
the cash flows of the future have to be discounted and made on par with what is the present value and then find out so we as we move forward for each technique whatever are the things uh, uh, let's learn about that the first one the traditional technique under that the first one is return on capital employed so in financial terms we also have this one as uh, arr it's mentioned as arr in some of the financial management textbooks if you are looking into this is also written as arr arr is average rate of return or it is also given in some of the books as accounting rate of return so roc is equal to the investment amount which is made initial capital cost or the investment okay that's there in the denominator average annual profit before interest and tax so average annual profit if the investment is worth 100% if you are taking the base to be as the investment if the investment is 100% the profits which are earned so annual profit all the profits are added up and then we find out the average so the average profit is what percentage so that is what is calculated so average profit so average profit is what percentage so it's that simple so here it says that average profit average annual profit before interest and taxes so that's the profit which is taken so no other uh, tax uh, adjustment is made um, it is just profit before tax as simple as that so take that into 100 divided by initial capital cost there are uh, advantages and uh, disadvantages strengths of this particular technique so when we are uh, uh, deciding on whether the investment should be made or not the criteria here is uh, to look into the investment proposal use various techniques and according to these techniques whether it should be invested or not is what is understood so among the techniques we have one technique the first one as the first one as roce second is payback period third is net present value fourth is internal rate of return so we are discussing the first technique so each one of them have their own set of assumptions the strengths and weaknesses uh, about the techniques the first technique has some strengths and certain limitations as well the first one is expressed in terms familiar to managers profit and capital employed so everybody understands what is profit so profit before tax a profit which is earned sales minus uh, <clears throat> the various expenses is profit before tax so everybody understands that so even if they are non financial people personal in the organization they understand what is profit so expressed in terms familiar to managers easy to calculate the likely effect of the project on the reported profit and loss and balance sheet managers are frequently rewarded in relation to the performance against these variables then business is judged by roi by financial market so um, ro roc we wrote it as roc but interchangeably we also use this as uh, we also call it as roi roi is return on investment initial capital amount is also called as investment so it is uh, very specifically when we look into that the terms are uh, differently used but interchangeably roc and roi are used so we uh, the main strength is everybody get to everybody uh, understands what is this um, technique the term profit is familiar to everyone so it is taken from the financial statements financial statements are disclosed everybody has a knowledge about that so um, and uh, in the um, industry in the business community among the competitors also on a comparative note roi is taken into consideration to compare the performance of various entities so 
that's the uh, main step the limitation part of it is it does not ensure that shareholders wealth is maximized but there are certain things which are not at all considered so here i'm not explaining but as we move ahead we also get to understand what is the difference here it is on a plain note take the profit compare it with the initial investment amount and find out what is the percentage but there are so many other intricacies uh, which have to be taken into consideration and then only we it will be possible to understand whether the shareholders wealth would be maximized or not figures easily manipulated financial statements can be manipulated depending on the accounting policy which is adopted the cost can be increased or decreased or certain things can be deferred to the next period so um, there is a possibility of manipulating profit fine uh, ignore the actual incremental cash flows associated with the pro project this is a very basic a uh, traditional technique which is used to evaluate whether the project should be taken up or not whether the investment should be made or not is that um, relevant cash flows what are relevant cash flows those cash flows which help in decision making are called as relevant cash flows those that do not help in decision making are called as irrelevant cash flows so now we are going to look into what are relevant cash flows so the criteria here is decision making relevant uh, for the purpose of taking decisions so when the decisions are taken the decision should be should consider only the future incremental cash flows but the ones which are uh, irrelevant they should be ignored they should not be considered okay among them <clears throat> the first one is um, here we see that there are certain costs which are not relevant for decision making so on account of that we see that there are certain costs which are mentioned there sunk cost committed cost depreciation interest and dividend payments what are sunk cost sunk costs are already incurred costs which are historical in nature they are already incurred nothing can be done to undo that so that is not relevant for decision making second one is committed cost so there are certain decisions which are taken in the past on account of that the costs are committed to be incurred in future let's say if they have signed a lease agreement if there is a lease agreement signed till the end of the lease period the amount of lease expenses have to be incurred can they undo that no can they uh, avoid it no because the terms and conditions cover a specific period of time until the period lapses until the period expires the amount has to be incurred so that is a committed cost there is a commitment made by the management therefore that's a committed cost next one is depreciation at the time of purchase of asset the method of depreciation is decided and the amount of depreciation is calculated until the end of the life of the asset fine that is depreciation which is already uh, there is a decision there is a commitment made uh, see the um, managers at the um, middle level low level they cannot do anything to um, control these costs they cannot avoid these costs because there is already a commitment made there is an agreement to charge this amount of depreciation by the top level management so depreciation is one among them then interest and dividend payments are fixed in nature um, for the preferred um, 
shareholders it is a fixed payment so these things are also not relevant for decision making because they have to be incurred period after period what is relevant is only the opportunity cost value of best missed opportunity so what is considered for uh, decision making we see it is the variable cost and the opportunity cost which are taken into consideration fine um keep that knowledge uh, for the time being because as we are going to go to the next topic about uh, how do we calculate cash flow after tax at that time we will also discuss about that the second technique is what is payback uh, period payback period the first technique is arr roc the second technique is payback so what's payback period now how do we calculate so this is specifically about a period we are calculating the time period a period in which the investment is paid back the period in which the investment is paid back that is the uh, concept here if in case uh, the cash flows are even i'm trying to look at a question from the examination kit if we have any so i'm no no no, no i'm uh, i'm not speaking i'm just searching for a question in the examination kit so that uh, we can work out immediately so i'm just looking at a question um so if the cash flows are even uh, throughout the period if there are even cash flows even cash flows same amount of cash flow let's say that the cash flows earned are 10000 each period or 5000 each period so we see basically that the cash flows are even in nature in that case it is simple in one step we can finish it off the calculation the uh, formula is initial payment divided by annual cash flow but it is not necessary that every year it would be the same amount of cash flow if that is not the same amount of cash flow how do we work it out is what we are going to look into now um, earlier the period of um, earlier the investment is paid back it is better for the organization see let instead of waiting for a longer period of time for the investment to be paid back it is better that they get the amount of investment at an earlier stage so um, that is how Uh, the evaluation is taken up the evaluation would be um, based on how quickly is the investment amount paid back so the focus will be on that simple to calculate and understand can be used for first stage screening in eliminating inappropriate projects prior to more detailed valuation bias in favor of short term projects which means that in that tends to minimize both financial and business risk uh, it is simple to calculate that is important point then the limitations are this one also does not consider the maximization of shareholders wealth okay it it ignores time of cash flow so after we work out one question we'll come back to that and then see what are the limitations so first i would like to show you uh, what is the way in which the payback period is calculated from the examination kit we will work out a question
the question in the examination kit is based on uh, discounted payback period but for the moment let's take the same set of data and use it for uh, payback period we'll work it out in an uh, excel sheet i'll put this question in an excel sheet and we'll work it out um all of you are also be prepared with the um, notebook and pen and calculator be ready so we can take it up the question says that a company has the following pattern of cash flows for a project year and cash flows the investment made as on today is 100000 and the cash flows are spread over five year period and then we see that the cash flows are not even first year it is 40 second year 20 35 and then 40000 so if this is the set of information if we are to find out what is payback period how do we proceed further i will work it out in the excel sheet the um, i hope you are able to see the screen um, with the question the question has uh, the cash flows given the details of cash flows are given to us for a period from 0 to 5 years the cash flows are given now how is uh, the payback period calculated what is the concept of payback period the period in which the initial investment is paid back the period in which the initial amount uh, is paid back so what is the initial amount initial amount is 100000 so how much time does it take for them to get back their initial investment amount is what has to be calculated under payback period so for, uh, the first year there is an amount of 40000 second year it is 20 so 40 plus 20 is uh, 60 60 plus next uh, again 30 Thirty becomes ninety. Ninety again, uh, another five ninety-five. Then we see that next cash flow is forty. So we want to know precisely how much time is required to get back this amount of one hundred thousand. So one lakh. How long does it take for them to get back their amount? So for that purpose, the next step what we use is we calculate cumulative cash flow. so the cash flows which are earned when we accumulate them so the first year we see that um, 40000 cash flow is earned the next year they have 20000 so 20 plus 40 gives us 60000 so it it goes on until the last period so we see that the cash flow of 100000 or 1 lakh is paid between these two periods so between uh, 
the fourth period and the fifth period. So fourth period by the end of fourth period, um, <clears throat> we see ninety five thousand is already paid back. So how much more has to be paid back? We see it is only an additional five thousand has to be paid back. So that five thousand e uh, is paid back out of. 40 so next year the cash flows are 40000 so out of 40000 we are we have to specifically pick out 5000 and find out what is the period okay so the formula goes like this so payback period is equal to payback period is equal to so a major part of the investment 95000 is paid by the end of Four years. So four years. How did we understand four years? Because ninety-five thousand is paid by the end of fourth year. So out of we are looking at an investment amount to be paid back as the total investment amount of one hundred thousand here. So out of one hundred thousand, ninety-five thousand is paid back by the end of fourth year. So four years period plus. How much more are we looking at? We are looking at the balance of it. One hundred thousand minus ninety-five thousand is only five thousand. So the balance of five thousand, balance of five thousand has to be taken from the next year's cash flow. The next year cash flow is how much? Forty thousand. So we are only uh, very specific about only five thousand. That's the difference between one hundred thousand minus ninety-five thousand, which is five thousand. So check check it out. How much is the answer? It is four point one two five years. Four point one two five years. Do you see that? How do we calculate if it is in case of it uneven cash flows? In case of uneven cash flows, we see that the um, payback period is calculated like this. If let's say that if a decision has to be taken among uh, multiple projects, if there are projects which are there. To be considered among them, only one has to be selected. Let's say that if one has to be selected, how would we select uh, the project? Whichever project has an early payback period, okay, the one which gives uh, uh, the investment amount as early as possible, that would be considered for decision making. That would be considered for uh, accepting the project and investing in that. Individually, here in this case, this is one individual project. So, how do we take decision in this case? The decision would be what is the life? The life is five years. So, payback period we got it as four point one two five. So, before the life of the asset, uh, life of the project uh, ends, then before that, if the um, investment is paid back, then it is profitable. It can be considered for accepting the project. So, if it is an individual one. If the payback period is less than the life of the project, the investment proposal should be accepted. If a decision has to be taken uh, for investment to be made among multiple projects, among projects, if we have to choose one project, whichever project has an early payback period, that should be considered to be accepted. Fine. Right? We'll go back to the PPT. This is a basic question about how do we work out on um, payback period. <clears throat> so this one also does not ensure limitations. Look into the limitation. This one also does not ensure the maximization of shareholders' wealth. It ignores timing of cash flow. That is, it, this this technique also is not considering. Adjusting the time value, the time value part of it is not considered here. Also, um, we still have to look into what is adjustment of time value of cash flow. So, ignores timing of cash flow within the payback period. Okay, after uh, the cash flows after the payback period, and therefore the total project return. The decision criteria I told you that the one which has an early payback period is considered. For example, let's say that. there are two projects if if a decision has to be taken about which one to be uh, accepted between a and b which one is better 
if we are to decide on that based on payback period what did i tell you earlier the better assuming that the payback period for the first project is 2 years payback period for the second project is 2.5 years so we are only focusing on this particular thing and uh, according to these values we see that a seems attractive because it gives back the uh, investment in only 2 years whereas b we have to wait until a period of 2.5 years so why are we considering earlier the better because future is uncertain as the time extends the risk also extends the uncertainty also extends so we see that in in that scenario in a risky scenario because the, the very fact that future is uncertain anything can happen at any given point of time so at at the earliest if the investment can be recovered it is better so that is the logic behind it now the decision will be a is a better one so a will be accepted so but here it is completely ignoring what are what is the scenario after the payback period so at the payback period we stop but let's say that a can have uh, cash flows in the third year fourth year and the fifth year also so but uh, b has cash flows only in the third year after two and a half years by the end of third year cash flows stop so the total amount of cash flows which are expected from a are much higher than b i'm sorry the exam i'm sorry with the example i should have no i should have presented with um so b has cash flows after the second uh, year third year fourth year and five, fifth year whereas project a does not have any cash flows so, but still we are not looking into that the decision criteria is earlier the better so a is accepted so a will give more returns only in the next year but b x uh, b can uh, give returns for over a period of 5 years so that is ignored we just stick to this part of the decision the decision is about which one is giving back the investment at an earlier stage so earlier the better so two years and two and a half years when we are uh, looking into that a is better accept a okay it says that they uh, ignores timing of cash flow when the cash flows are earned okay ignores the time value of money unable to distinguish between projects with the same payback period so if two projects have the same payback period then what is it uh, how do we consider that no information which is provided by this technique tends to favor short term projects over long long longer term projects takes account of risk of the timing of cash flows but not variability of those cash flows sorry i got disconnected um, we'll continue back so the first two techniques we see that they are traditional techniques that roce and payback period are traditional techniques but the next two ones are um discounted techniques okay they are modern techniques they are uh, also called as um present value techniques what is this concept of present value as i have um, some time back i have explained to you that as the time passes by the value of uh, money keeps decreasing so value of money is subject to the concept of time so it is connected to time as the time passes by value of money keeps decreasing so considering that all the future cash flows are adjusted according to what is 
its value as on today, the present value. After adjusting all the future cash flows present value, they are summed up and compare it with the investment made as on today. So the investment made as on today is considered and taken for comparison of all the future cash flows which are discounted according to the present value. So that looks more appropriate because the future cash flows which are uh, spread over a period of time will not have the same value as they are anticipated. If 10,000 is anticipated to be earned at the end of the first year, it will not carry a value of 10,000, but it will carry a lesser value. Okay, it will carry a lesser value. So that part we have to remember. So money received today is worth more than the same sum received in the future because of the potential for earning interest, the impact of inflation and the effects of risk. So. <clears throat> Let's see if you have um, if you have hundred rupees. A simple example. If you put this hundred rupees in a bank, okay, bank. If the bank rate, for example, if the bank rate is five percent, so the bank uh, in the bank the balance will be hundred plus. 5% of 100, 5 will be added and this will be at a value of 105. The same 100 as on today, by the time, by the time it, one time period passes, the same 100 now appears in the account as 105. This is the potential for earning interest. So, the same 100 as on today, to have the value, it has to be increased in terms of the quantity because 100 appears in the books at 105 by the end of first year. So, that's the potential for earning interest. So, the quantities keep increasing as the time passes by. As the quantities increase, we understand that what 100 rupees is able to do today, it will become possible with that hundred, uh, with uh, the same thing to be with 105. Only with 105, you will be able to work it out, whatever you can do it, uh, with 100 as on today at the end of one year. So it goes on like that. So that's one, one reason why the value of money decreases. Then the second one is what is the impact of Inflation. In, inflation is uh, a situation where the prices keep rising. Because the prices keep rising, the purchasing power of money keeps reducing. Therefore, we call that the value of money decreases as the time passes by. The effect of risk. See, uh, the, uh, the projects which are taken up, are the cash flows are spread into future. Future is risky. Some of the projects by nature are very risky. So, the values which are earned out of this risky investment um, do, are not uh, worth the same thing. So because of the effect of risk also, we see that the value of money keeps decreasing as the time passes by. These are the three uh, reasons why uh, value keeps decreasing. The one which I have explained to you about the compounding technique, um, the future value is equal to the principal amount into 1 plus R whole to the power of N. Uh, mathematically, we understand what is the uh, amount at the end of a period. This is the formula which is used. So uh, financial tables also help us in calculating what is the future value, what is the present value based on the table values. So compounding is uh, by how much does it increase? So if it increases as 5 by the end of first year, by the end of second year, on 105, 5% will be calculated. 105 into, uh, there's another 5% of 105, which will be calculated. If it is third year, it is again um, multiplied. Uh, so whatever is this value, on this value, 5% interest will be calculated, accumulated. So 
the principal amount into 1 plus r whole to the power of n is the equation to find out what is the future value. So what will be the present value? What do you think will be the present value? If we have to find out the present value, present value is equal to the value in the future, future value divided by 1 plus r whole to the power of n. So when we are discounting, we discount the cash flows divided by 1 plus the rate of interest r whole to the power of n. So future value uh, divided by 1 plus r whole to the power of n. That's how we calculate that. But we don't have to use, don't be scared about this formula and all. We don't have to use these mathematical formula, uh, formulae. We just have to uh, use the table values. In the examination also table values will be provided because it's a computer based exam. The, on the screen you will have these table values. You can use them. The base for the calculation of uh, discounted values is uh, the concept of interest is paid periodically. The interest amount keeps getting accumulated. So considering that we uh, find out what is the future value, what is the present value. Mathematically don't have to remember that. But in adverse situations where table values are not there, then we get back to the mathematical formula. But then in your exam, while working out also, you have the table values which are provided to you. So we can pick out the values from the tables and just multiply. That is as simple as that. So when we come to the third and the fourth techniques, the third technique is the net present value. The fourth technique is the internal rate of return. So these are the two techniques what, uh, what are available. Um, under. In fact, other uh, there is another thing also, but I think it's not covered. Some other context, if uh, we come across, we can look into that. Net present value, that's the technique which is there under the modern techniques or we call them as uh, uh, the scientific techniques, discounted or present value techniques. So under that, the first technique is net present value. The first two techniques, the first one ROCE, ROCE is calculation of a percentage. Percentage as if the investment is made, the annual average profit which is earned is compared with the investment is converted into a percentage. So based on the percentage, the decision will be taken. So if ROCE is greater than the discount rate, ROC is greater than the cost of capital rate, then we accept it, otherwise we reject it. So here, there, uh, ROCE, in case of ROCE, it's simple comparison, comparison of what is the investment, what is the cash flow, the profit, specifically the profit. If this is the amount of investment made, how much is the profit each year? On an average, each year, how much profit will be earned? So convert it, in, convert it into a percentage and then uh, understand what is the profit margin. Second one, if investment is made today, how much time does it take for the investment to be paid back is the focus in the second technique. Third one considers the time value of money. That's the main advantage. Okay, The first one talks about it considers the time value of money. It is an absolute measure. It is not converted into a percentage. It's an absolute measure. It is based on cash flows, not profits. Okay, it considers the whole life of the project. Whole life of the project, which one is not considering? Which technique is not considering the whole life? Payback period. Payback period is not considering the whole life. As soon as the payback value is calculated, a decision is taken, ignoring what are the cash flows after the payback period. So the whole life is not considered by uh, payback period, but net present value considers the whole life of the project. It should lead to maximization of shareholders' wealth and higher discount rates can be set for riskier projects. But okay, the advantages are there, but what is that uh, the technique is all about? 
a comparison comparison about the investment so investment we can also call it as cash outflows so the investment made is cash outflow versus the cash flows the cash flows after tax investment versus cash flows after tax but these are spread over uh, a period of time in the future then we also have mentioned that this one this technique considers the time value of money so all these cash flows after tax the present value has to be calculated so present value of cash flows after tax present value how do we calculate i will help you out the present value of all the cash flows after tax added up okay the sum total of all the present value cash flows after tax is considered for comparison with the investment so we are comparing the investment versus the future cash flows so if the future cash flows the sum total of all the future cash flows is higher than the investment the project should be accepted otherwise it has to be rejected so we are comparing both of them investment and the cash flows but how is it different from the payback period the payback period concept has not discounted them they were taken at their uh, anticipated value whatever was the expected value the same value was taken for decision making here the future anticipated cash flows are calculated according to the present value so present value cash flow after tax then the sum total of all that is compared with cash outflow so which one is better it is um, it is to be accepted so here technically the technique what we uh, find out is the present value cash flow after tax the present value of all cash flows from that the cash outflow is deducted so if this is more than the cash outflow it is a profitable one if the uh, returns are better than the investment it is a better one so if this happens to be a positive figure if this happens to be a positive figure accept the project why would it be positive because the cash inflows are more than the cash outflows so it is positive accept it otherwise reject it so that is the decision criteria in case of net present value net is after deduction so the present value of all the cash flows from that after deduction the deduction is cash investment made and we have the value called as npv and if this npv is a positive figure then we accept the project otherwise reject the project okay important thing is all future cash flows are discounted to their present value as on today what value do these cash flows have so as interest rate of 5 is paid so 105 after one year is worth 100 only only 100 as on today so 100 and we are looking into the bank account and stating that it is worth 105 but that 105 after one year when you look back it is worth only 100 as on today so the future cash flows also have lesser value so lesser value find out that lesser value as on today total it up and use it for comparison with the investment if the investment cost is less than that accept it otherwise reject it. okay a positive result indicates the project should be accepted negative should be rejected now um the disadvantage part of it it's not easily explained to managers some of the managers do not have that sound financial knowledge they may be from non finance backgrounds like uh, maybe somebody is uh, with a specialization of hr somebody is with a specialization of marketing they may not be aware of these financial terminology this technical jargon they may not be aware so it becomes difficult to to make them understand about what is this npv technique irr technique these are difficult for non financial managers to understand 
requires that the cost of capital is known. So the point is, I'm saying that we have to discount them. We have to find out the present value. So discounting at what rate? At a specific rate. But what's that rate? If nothing is provided to us, we need to find out what is the weighted average cost of capital and apply this for using it to discount that. So maybe after a while, you can understand about what is cost of capital and apply that. So to know what is our, to know what is the rate at which the cash flows would be discounted is important for us to understand. Okay. Did I make NPV uh, explanation clear? We'll take up the calculation of it. Is it, uh, is it uh, clear in the first place? Please respond. Ma yes. It will be better once we do a question. Maybe. Uh -huh. Immediately we will do that. But first, if you have understood the explanation, I'll take you to the exam kit and then we'll work out one question from the exam kit. So like the non-financial managers uh, find it very difficult to understand, you are also finding it very difficult to understand the explanation. Is that so? Uh, one second, I am just taking out one question. Uh... Just a minute. I do not see a straightforward direct question um, in the exam kit. Um, well, what we'll do is um, we have done a payback period uh, thing just now. We let's use this data and then uh, calculate what is net present value. So I'm just using this data because a direct simple straightforward question is not there. Uh, NPV for the same set of data. So let's use the same set of data and find out what is the net present value. I hope you're able to see the uh, Excel sheet on the screen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, simple question is I didn't find it in the exam kit. So we are using the same set of data. The discount rate is given as 10%. Okay. Um, the company uses a discount rate of 10%. So let's, uh, so now how, what is that we have to understand? The cash investment as on today is 1 lakh. But the total cash flows which are anticipated from future, we see that the total is as uh, 40, 20, 60, 90, 95, 135. So 100 and 135,000 are to be compared. If nothing was, uh, if there is no uh, discounting technique used, then we just add them up and use it. But here, it is a discounted technique. How should we discount the cash flows? We should discount them according to the 
discount rate. What is the discount rate? Ten percent. Present value factor. Present value factor at ten percent. The table values will be provided to us, so we can take it from the table value. Otherwise, there is a formula: one divided by one plus r. R is what? Ten percent. Okay. Whole to the power of the equation to the power of one in the first year. So the second year it will be two. It, these are the table values. We can also use uh, calculated with the help of a calculator. Okay, but in the examination this would be there, so don't have to be worried about how what will we do. In a situation where you do not have the table values provided, you can use it um, with your calculator. In your calculator, just uh, type it as one divided by okay one plus. In your calculator, one plus ten percent is point one, isn't it? So point one. So when I mean uh, the Excel sheet uh, expects you to give uh, the syntax properly, the there should be no error. So this calculator doesn't have brackets and all. It can take one divided by one point one. So it can directly take one divided by one point one. So when you give that, uh, you get the value. 0.90. The next value when you want to get, you have to keep, uh, you have to press is equal to. So, n number of items you want, that many number of times you have to keep pressing is equal to. So, you keep getting that. Try it out if you are not aware of that. Are you aware of this technique with the calculator? Yes, ma'am. So, fine. So, in any situation, even in a situation where calc uh, uh, the table values are not aware, also we still can find out that. Now the discounting uh, factor, um, the present value factor is at ten percent. Now we need to discount the cash flows at ten percent. So PB of cash flows, the present value of cash flows. How do we do? We just have to multiply them. Ma'am, do we take the PV factor till the first uh, three decimal points? Uh, anything is up to you. Because it's a computer-based exam. For you also, you will have these uh, Excel sheets only, uh, spreadsheets uh, and... Uh... Uh, but in the table, we will only have it till the three decimal places. Whatever is available there, you just have to take. So no issues there. Whatever is available in the table value, take only to the uh, only those values. So what are we doing? We are taking the sum total of all the cash inflows. From that, the cash outflow is a negative one. We are deducting this. So the net present value is three six eight three positive value three six eight three point nine two six. So this is the present value of cash inflows. So from the total present value of cash inflows, the amount of cash outflow 1 lakh is deducted. After that, we see that it is 3683 plus 3683.926, so which is a positive value. Therefore, the project should be accepted. We'll go back to the uh, PPT.
okay um, is it any better npv did you understand how do we do that yes ma'am okay don't expect anything uh, on that note uh, as simple as that will not be tested your questions will be little on an advanced note only maybe the uh, in the question npvs are already calculated and provided so the rest of the question whatever is there we need to take it up so we are going to look into some of the questions like that also um, okay in the example what we have worked out we see that the cash flows were uneven the same amount of cash flows were not seen each year for a period of 5 years the cash flows were uneven so then for each period we were uh, working out on uh, what is the present value factor take that factor multiply that and then um, calculate the present value of the cash flow sum total of it and then the rest of it what if uh, each year the cash flow which is anticipated is the same then we call them as annuities we also have an annuity table so select the annuity value one value take the cash flow multiply into the annuity value and the calculation is finished in one single step that is take the annual cash flow if the cash flows happen to be even every year it's the same amount of cash flow so even cash flows so take an annual cash flow multiply into the annuity value the annuity value is given as 1 minus 1 plus r whole to the power of n divided by r okay so this is the formula which is used for us we do not have to be worried about that um, uh, how do we apply this one okay so because it is with the help of a calculator or in a spreadsheet um if we have to find out the annuity part of it we can also do that so once this is calculated sum it up and this becomes annuity value 3.79079 so just you have to use the auto sum for the that is also a way in which we can calculate if with the calculator also you keep mentioning all these values and finally add them up then that gives us the annuity value so the cash flows if they happen to be even cash flows we just have to sum it up like this okay take the uh, the factors add them up and then multiply into the cash flow uh, that's an easy way of doing use the auto sum function and then easy way to do that calculator also on a paper you can um, mention all these uh, factors finally add them up to get what is the present value of uh, annuity but when once the table values are given we don't have to be worried about that take the cash flow annual cash flow multiply into the annuity factor what is perpetuity perpetuity is forever there is no end infinity so the formula will be um, here it says 1 plus r to the power of infinity infinity is not known anything to the power of infinity is zero zero so 1 minus 0 by r so we will be left with the formula as cash flow into 1 by r so if at all if the ca if the uh, cash flows are for a perpetual period of time for perpetuity the cash flow into 1 by r so anything to the power of infinity becomes zero so we just have to do cash flow divided by r because gives us the value of uh, a cash flow for annuity mom can you please go back to the previous slide yes ma'am yes ma'am
so if in, uh, the next topic what we have here is the delayed advanced annuities and perpetuities um, if investment is made in the zero year so we cannot start expecting that um, we cannot expect that the cash flows will start to come in from first year they may also uh, start at a later period if investment is made today it may take little while for them to earn the cash flow so that's delayed cash delayed cash flows some reg regular cash flows may start later than t1 t1 is the first year time period in the first year these are dealt by uh, dealt with by applying the appropriate factor so just because the cash flows have started earning we cannot ignore the time period so uh, so specifically let's say that it has started from the first uh, third year so we need to take the factor from the third year let's say the first two periods there is no cash flow zero zero and from the third year only we see that there is a cash flow so the present value factor applicable is the third year's factor we cannot take the first year factor so that has to be taken into consideration appropriate factor to the cash flow as normal which will discount the series of cash flows back to one time period before it starts and then discounting your answer back to T zero. So if it is advanced, ignore the first cash flow when determining the annuity. Perpetuity factor and then add one to the factor. So when we come across, we'll look into this part of it. <clears throat> or else, let me finish this. Um, advanced, it is. If the cash flows are not going to be started from uh, the first period, maybe say after a while it will start. So we need to take the appropriate cash flows. So here, if if uh, the first period there are no cash flows, so they have to be ignored. And uh, from a delayed period, it if it happens to be a perpetuity, so take this value, multiply into one R, one by R. So this is the value as at the end of the third period. So the perpetuity value as, because the cash flows have started to be earned from the third period. So we are calculating the present value at the end of third period. So this value, which when it is multiplied into one by R is the value at the end of third year, but we want it as on today. So after doing this calculation, again, take it back to zero year. So we need to take it back to zero year to find out what is the present value. That is the point. So when we come across the questions, we will look into that. For the moment, I have explained it, but uh, we will definitely take it up any example which is there. Um, should I explain IRR now or uh, take it up for the next class? What do you want? We'll do the explanation now. Mom, you can take the next class also okay. if you want. No, no, no. Um, if you're comfortable with the explanation, we'll finish it off now. So tomorrow we can spend some time on what okay. we Or um, okay. we'll do it now. Okay, Varun wants it in the next class. Done, 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 done. Uh, so we'll work out a few questions from the exam kit um, based on these um, things.
Okay, question number one, 97 is ROCE. Let's take it up ROCE first. Um, question number 97. I'll put it on the Excel sheet. Okay, very good, 25%. Each company's latest results are as follows. We have profit before interest and taxation, profit before taxation, profit after tax. There are three different profits which are given. And we have, in addition, extracts from its latest statement of financial statements are as follows. The equity and the non-current liabilities, the total amount is, um, the amounts are given. We need to calculate what is ROC. What's the formula of ROC? ROC is equal to, We have annual profit. Is it after tax, before tax, uh, before taxation? What is the case? Before interest, and tax. before interest and tax, very specific. So among these three uh, items, we have to select the appropriate one, annual profit um, before interest and taxation divided by the annual investment, the average annual investment. So investment amount, the total capital employed or investment amount is 12,500. So the, which is equal to 2,500 divided by 12,500. The total investment is 10,000 plus 2,500. Twenty percent total capital employed. So capital employed is both equity and uh, uh, non-current liabilities. That is long-term liabilities also. So we have to take both of them. Then we have the next question, ninety-eighth question. Ninety-eighth question: A company undertakes a project that involves purchasing machinery at a cost of sixty-five thousand. The machinery is used on the project for five years, generating operating cash inflows of twenty thousand per year. It is sold at the end of the project for ten thousand. Taxation is charged at a rate of thirty percent. Um, calculate the initial return on capital employed for the project to the nearest. Whole percentage. So how do we work it out? So the details what are provided to us are the initial investment is 65,000, right? Initial investment is 65,000, but 
there is one important thing which is given as that the 65000 can get back 10000 as scrap or salvage value at the end of the period that is 10000 10000 is the salvage value or what we call it as scrap value apart from that during the life the life is for 5 years during the life um, a cash flow of 20000 per year can be generated <clears throat> In a project, first the source of revenue which is generated is sales. From sales, less expenses. Expenses are deducted. So once expenses are deducted, the resultant figure is called as um, the profit. If these expenses are only the cash expenses, so we need to take only the cash expenses. So if that is what is considered, the profit, the cash profit. Then non-cash expenses like depreciation also is there. Why, uh, why should we deduct depreciation? Depreciation is an operating expense. It has to be deducted. After this is deducted, the profit which is generated, on this profit, taxes are calculated. So the accounting principles allow depreciation to be treated uh, as an operating expense and find out profit. And that profit becomes the base for calculating tax. So we understand that on account of depreciation, there is no cash outflow. So therefore, it is an irrelevant cost. So one slide I have done about what are the relevant costs and uh, irrelevant costs. So depreciation is an irrelevant cost. It is not decided in the current period. It was decided on the day when the asset was purchased. So as long as the life of the asset lasts, this amount of depreciation will be provided. It cannot be changed, altered, affected, uh, made it as uh, zero. It, it absolutely cannot be avoided. There is a commitment made and depreciation has to be provided. Moreover, it is a non-cash transaction. It, it's in spite of all these things, it is an allowable expense which has to be deducted. It is an allowable deduction. So after deducting that, profit is uh, calculated. From the profit, on the profit, taxes are calculated. So taxes are calculated. Then the resultant figure is called as profit after tax. Okay. But we know that depreciation is a non-cash expense. There was no cash which... Uh, which uh, uh, had uh, flown out of the business, there was no flow of uh, cash on account of depreciation. So on that note, the amount of depreciation which was deducted should be added back. Depreciation is added back. So the, then this is called as cash flow after tax. Okay, the machinery is used on the project for five years, generating operating cash inflows of 20,000. Cash inflows of 20,000. So cash inflows are 20,000. We need to work out as what is cash flow before interest and taxes. So this is the cash, uh, this is the uh, profit which we are focused on for the purpose of calculating. ROC. When ROC has to be calculated, we need to know what is the amount of depreciation. Because depreciation, it is an allowable expense to find out what is the profit. So to find out the profit, to find out the profit, we also need to know what is the depreciation. Okay. To find out the profit, the depreciation part of it has to be understood. The formula for depreciation is equal to depreciation is equal to cost of the asset minus if there is any scrap value that has to be deducted scrap value divided by life of the asset.
the depreciation is 11000 we need to know what is profit before interest and uh, taxes so the profit before interest and taxes is what we have to find out before tax how much is the profit so we see that there is a operating cash inflows of 20,000 generating operating cash inflows of 20,000. So 20,000 minus the depreciation amount. Depreciation amount we got it as We'll do one thing. I know Varun has asked me to do IRR tomorrow because we still have uh, roughly about 20 minutes. We'll do the uh, explanation about uh, IRR. And tomorrow's class, um, all the questions from the um, exam kit related to this topic, we'll take it up. Because each one has a different set of uh, adjustment in the exam kit. 
So we'll take up those adjustments and look into that. But now, straight away, I will not start with those questions. So after I finish uh, with the IRR explanation, then uh, there are certain things also about the real money, the nominal money, nominal value of money, real value of money, uh, the formulas if I discuss, the taxation issues, then I think it will be appropriate for me to work it out, work out those questions um, related to this. So today's class will work out, we'll see what is the meaning of what is internal rate of return. How did we work out NPV? NPV says NPV is equal to a comparison of the cash outflows. This is compared with the present value of all the cash flows after tax at R percent, at a percentage of discount at R percent for N number of years. R percent in N number of years. So when R percentage is given to us, take R percentage and then for N number of years, the cash flows are discounted. The sum total of it is taken for comparison with the cash outflow. Given that R is there, what is R? How do we understand what is the value of R? R is generally taken as the prevailing interest rate one way. R is also the uh, rate of return which the firm earns. So R is the required rate of return. Nothing is there. We also have to calculate uh, uh, what is the average cost, weighted average cost of capital. So some R is selected. So selection of R is also important. So what is the R at which when the cash flows are discounted, they are better than, they are more than the cash investment. So that is the decision criteria under NPV. IRR, on the other hand, also takes the calculation of, I'll put this one. Um, IRR also, on the other hand, it is comparing both cash outflows and the cash inflows. So each cash flow which is earned at the end of a period has to be discounted. Discounting part of it also we've looked into as the cash flow at the end of first year has to be discounted as one plus K. K or R, uh, let's take it as R since we are discussing it as R. One plus R whole to the power of one. Plus the second year cash flow, C2. Cash flow in the second year divided by 1 plus R whole to the power of 2. So it goes on till the nth year. So when each cash flow is discounted at R and you add them up, the sum total of all the cash flows, okay, they should be greater than the cash outflow is NPV. IRR is 
when these cash flows are discounted the sum total of all the cash flows should be equal to the cash outflow so equal equal is the concept here they should be equal so irr is at what rate when the cash flows are discounted at what rate the cash flows are discounted equals the sum total of the cash flows to the cash outflow so we need to find out r the, the equation is very complicated it is very difficult to bring out r from this equation because everywhere we see an exponential value so they, when there is an exponential value in each value it is not simple that we can bring out r out of this equation and calculate what is r the concept is when the future cash flows are discounted at some percentage r the sum total of all the future discounted cash flows will become equal to the cash investment that is the concept concept of internal rate of return so what is the value of r what is the rate at which when the cash flows are discounted become equal to cash outflow so both of them we are equating so cash inflows and cash outflows should be equal so when both of them are equal we also see that npv is equal to 0 when both of them are equal npv becomes 0 okay now because we have mentioned that it is not a simple task that we can find out uh, r very easily we have to find uh, we have to go on a trial and error method so uh, keep assuming r value assume r value substitute uh, find out the discount factors calculate that and then find out what is the value compare it with the investment if the investment and the sum total of cash inflows are equal then uh, that that uh, assumed value of r will become irr but is that possible that we can precisely um, identify this is one of the techniques for us to know uh, see there are various techniques so all these techniques are used uh, there's a question asked in the chat why are we calculating irr when we have npv the point is uh, each technique is talking about something roc is talking about the percentage of profit which is earned payback is talking about what is the period in which the investment can be earned back npv is talking about uh, uh, whether the project should be accepted or not because the values are given in absolute terms irr is a percentage calculation it is a discounted percentage so we need to understand whether the project should be accepted or not based on what is irr so the cost of capital is given as r this is the minimum amount of cost which has to be paid if r is more than cost of capital if r exceeds the cost of capital the irr value is greater than the cost of capital which they are paying then based on this technique irr the projects can be accepted these are alternative methods which are there npv is not a, a perfect method it is a good method but we cannot say that it is suitable in all situations but irr uh, is uh, a percentage calculation a r calculation so it is easy for us to compare comparability would be there whenever the values are calculated in terms of a percentage since it is a percentage value calculated therefore it becomes easy for us to um, compare it among the projects and select which one is a better project so that is there with irr okay um, so at what rate when the cash flows are discounted so if the cash flows discounted r uh, at a particular rate and that r happens to be greater than k then the projects will be accepted so this is the accept reject criteria so at what rate when they are discounted become equal to zero so it's a trial and error method it is a trial and error method uh, so we start with um, we start with one uh, value which is assumed 
So check whether the sum total is equal to the cash outflow. If it is not equal, try another method. Try another rate. I'm really sorry. Try another rate. So uh, in this process of trial and error, select two rates. A rate, a lower rate uh, at which when the cash flows are discounted, the total value is greater than zero. One value is greater than zero. One value is less than zero. So a negative value of uh, NPV, a negative value, a positive value of NPV. Two values have to be selected. So a higher value, a lower value. So we should select a higher interest rate, a lower interest rate. Since these are assumed values, only thing what we have to be uh, considering is the sum total of the cash inflows. One value should be a negative value. One value should be a positive value. One value should be greater than zero. One value should be less than zero. See, if we get precisely the exact value as equal to the cash outflow, we don't have to work out this interpolation. We call this as interpolation. Uh, it, since we, it is very difficult for us to find out the exact value of IRR using a trial and error method. So we need to depend on an interpolation formula. So this is the formula for interpolation. So by now, we would have already calculated the discounted cash flow, the net present value of cash flows using two different rates. One having a positive NPV, one having a negative NPV. But we want NPV to be exactly zero. So use this formula. L is the lower rate of interest plus in bracket NL, NPV at lower rate of interest. So the net present value at the lower interest rate divided by the difference in the two net NPVs, NPVs of two different. Um, so this is delta. So we don't take the negative value at all. This would be delta. The difference, it's only the difference between two uh, rates, the NPVs of two rates into the difference between the rates, higher rate and the lower rate. So substituting that, we get to calculate what is IRR. I think there is one uh, direct question which is given. Um, for calculation of IRR. But I think uh, I'll wind up the class uh, after taking your uh, doubts here because right now we cannot uh, work it out a question on uh, IRR. So tomorrow, once again, I'll explain IRR. And then tomorrow's focus, let's uh, take it up the questions which are there in the examination kit based on investment appraisal and work out uh, those questions. So each one of them is different in a way in which the adjustments are given. So considering all of them, we'll work it out. So the advantages are um, of IRR, we see that it considers the time value of money. It's a percentage, therefore it is easily understood. Uses cash flows. It considers the whole life of the project, does not need cost of capital to be known. A company selecting projects where the IRR exceeds the cost of capital should increase shareholders' value. Then uh, it is not a measure of absolute profitability. Absolute is in, in dollar value. That is like NPV. Um, small projects with high IRR might not end it. So there is some um, difficulty in uh, considering IRR to be as the best one. See, when there are multiple cash outflows, IRR calculated is not reliable. There may be multiple IRRs given. It uh, only has to go through the interpolation uh, formula. Um, it is a trial and error method. Precise value cannot be known. Uh, so it is not, uh, uh, I mean, the calculation is little complicated. So it, it doesn't give a precise value. So it's not, it's not reliable, but it can be easily understood. Once everything is converted into percentage, it is easy to understand. So that is one thing. NPV is um, easy to calculate. The values are in absolute values. A project with a higher investment can have a higher uh, NPV. Okay. So we cannot directly take whichever project has a higher NPV to be as the best in best uh, project. Here, because it is converted into percentage, we can relatively compare and do that. Okay. Uh, 
so that is how we look into npv calculation and irr calculation so tomorrow's class we'll start with the numerical questions and take up the numerical questions and uh, understand that okay shall i end the class any doubts ma'am uh, yeah. to ask if you irr is less than cost of capital hmm then can we say that our npv will be negative no uh, see uh, in um uh, See when we are um, cost of capital, R is greater than cost of capital. At uh, um, for IRR, the accept proposal rule is R is greater than cost of capital. A rate higher than cost of capital, the discounting will be more. After discounting higher amounts, we are ensuring that this is equal to cash outflow. If k is the rate at which the discounting is done lesser amount of cash flows are discounted fine fine i even after discounting it at higher values you are still arriving at cash outflow a rate a higher rate with which you are discounting also so here both of them become equal the equation part of it this has to be equal at r when you discount it this has to the sum total has to be equal to cash outflow so both of them when they are equal this from the cash inflows cash outflows is deducted it becomes zero so npv is perfectly at a zero value it cannot be negative the accept reject rule we are saying that even after deduct even after discounting at a higher percentage also they are as on par with cash outflow okay by discounting at a lesser value also a lesser value that is cost of capital that that is k so if you are discounting at a higher value also you still reaching that cash outflow so r is better than k r is greater than k um, therefore it is acceptable uh, accepted uh, k is the the cost of capital is the minimum return minimum return which the firm has to earn so let's say if a firm has to pay 10% cost of capital if 10% of, uh, is the cost of capital which it has to pay if their irr is 12% they are earning returns better than what the cost of capital has to be paid so that is the decision rule the decision rule is r should be greater than k so the r is more than what cost of capital has to be paid so that is the accept uh, criteria this is not connected to npv being zero by by calculating r we are ensuring that the sum total of the cash inflows are equal to the cash outflow so there's no concept of going into a negative value okay ma'am yeah thank okay. you so much ma'am no Okay, so we'll wind up today and um, we'll uh, take it up tomorrow. So tomorrow we will work out more number of numerical questions. Okay, good day.